And closing arguments are expected today in the Jonathan Majors domestic violence trial. The defense rested its case yesterday, and the judge released new evidence, including video, audio, texts, and photos. Senior investigative correspondent Erin Katursky has the latest on that case. Jonathan Majors returns to court as the jury prepares to decide a domestic violence case that could determine the trajectory of the actor's career. What happened exactly, do you know? No, I don't know. Um... Uh, but she's unconscious. Majors called 911 back in March. I think I saw uh, a cut behind her. After he found his ex-girlfriend, Grace Jabari, on a closet floor in their apartment, the jury saw video from police body-worn cameras. Jabari did have a cut behind her ear. The jury saw this picture of it. The jury also saw a photo of Jabari's finger that she testified Majors fractured during an assault in the back seat of an SUV. My head was resting on his shoulder, Jabari told the jury. We were chatting, and he was scrolling on his phone when a message popped up saying, I wish I was kissing you. Upset by the message, Jabari testified she grabbed the phone, and then I felt a heavy thud on top of me, what I knew to be the weight of him on top of me and him trying to pry the phone out of my fingers. Surveillance video shows Majors hoisting Jabari off the ground and shoving her back in the car before he's seen running off. She chases after him. He pushes her away and runs off, Jabari crossing traffic in pursuit. Jonathan Majors' case is going to hinge on two major components. One, will you believe that Grace Jabari was injured by Jonathan Majors from all the video and the testimony that we saw and heard? And two, was Jonathan Majors justified in his actions after Grace Jabari admittedly took his property, that being his cell phone, and he tried to recover it from her. Major's career had been taking off when the Marvel star and Jabari met on the set of Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, and began dating. Scott Lang. Before the alleged assault, she testified he had mood swings and a temper. The jury seeing text messages purporting to show Majors dissuading Jabari from going to the hospital following an alleged altercation between them in 2022. The jury also hearing this recording of the actor scolding Jabari. How dare you come home drunk and disturb the peace of our house? And telling her he needs a great woman because he's a great man. Coretta Scott King. Do you know who that is? That's Martin Luther King's wife. Michelle Obama, Barack Obama's wife, my temper, my <laughs> my trauma, blah, blah, all that, all that said, I'm a great man, a great man. I am doing great things, not just for me, but for my, for my culture and for the world. That is actually the position I'm in. The woman that supports me needs to be a great woman. And senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky and ABC News legal contributor Brian Buckmeyer join me now for more on this. Aaron, what can we expect to happen in court today? Closing arguments are going to come this morning, Diane. Each side uh, going to lay out their case. The, the government is expected to cast uh, Jonathan Majors as someone who committed misdemeanor assault and harassment, who injured Grace Jabari, and who long before the alleged assault back in March subjected her to, to both physical and verbal abuse. And the defense is going to cast Jabari as the aggressor and uh, Jonathan Majors as the victim of her aggression. They called a witness, a, a medical expert, who really cast doubt on the severity of Jabari's injuries and, and whether uh, he was seen uh, calm, not behaving like the kind of, of person prosecutors portrayed. Uh, Brian, how damning is this new evidence to majors in this case, like the audio we just heard? And how strong did you think his three defense witnesses were? The evidence is very damning. It, it paints the picture of this crescendo of this emotional and verbal abuse that leads to the ultimate uh, issue that we're here for, that being this alleged assault of Grace Jabari and, and the understanding of who uh, exactly Jonathan Majors is. In terms of the three defense attorneys, I think they could have been better, not necessarily from their the own... Witnesses. Uh, sorry, witnesses, yes. Some of the three witnesses, I think they could have been better, not necessarily in what they gave to us, but what the defense was able to pull out of them. There was a lot of objections that were sustained, specifically from the doctor who was able to articulate, kind of, uh, that these injuries don't seem to be... Uh, from the same manner that Grace Jabari said that they, that they came about, that the way the fracture happened doesn't seem to happen from the way that she described Jonathan Majors pulling her finger apart. I think, ultimately, this case is going to be decided from the summations. So, Aaron, he's facing misdemeanor charges of assault and aggravated harassment. What happens if he's found guilty? He could face up to a year in prison. Whether he would actually face that much on a misdemeanor, no criminal record remains to be seen. But 
even if he beats the charges and is acquitted, uh, the reputational harm may be fairly consequential. Uh, and and as, as Brian suggests, he has already been portrayed, even if he beats the alleged assault, he's already been portrayed as a serial abuser of Grace Jabari, both physically and emotionally. The jury also saw images of candles and other items that he threw at her head. And, and they saw those text messages after some altercation in 2022 where he says, no, no, don't go to the hospital because they'll suspect me. All right, Eric Katursky, Brian Buckmeyer, thank you both. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.